hello it is april 28th the 28th day of vlogging every day in april and today is kind of dreary and rainy and drizzly and that's the perfect weather to watch pride and prejudice this is my family's favorite rainy day activity well i guess the girl members of my family's rainy day activity we all kind of are on the same wavelength it's raining we text each other p and p and we all know we're gonna watch pride and prejudice the cinematography in this video is just superb and amazing and wonderful. It inspired us to buy the piano music for Pride and Prejudice because the musical score in this movie is wonderful. I loved Pride and Prejudice. I always watch it. I probably have already watched it four times in 2013, if not more. But in April of last year, a YouTube adaptation of Pride and Prejudice came on to the scene and I started watching it from episode one. It was basically kind of video blogs like this where twice a week, Lizzie Bennett or Elizabeth Bennett would talk about her life and her sisters and um, this new guy who moved into town and how her mom wanted her to get married, etc, etc. It follows the whole storyline over the course of a year. We didn't even see Darcy until the 60th episode because obviously if Lizzie is the prejudiced version of this, we're getting Lizzie's prejudiced view of Darcy who is the pride part, so he sounds like a big douche. And then it finished up this April. We saw Darcy and Lizzie get together finally and, you know, live happily ever after. Having it over the course of the year kind of took the focus just off of the relationship and more onto how Lizzie grows and changes in her relationships with her sisters as well as with Darcy. Overall, I recommend it and you should go check it out. Lizzie Bennet Diaries. You could watch the whole thing because it's over now. It would take you a long time, but it would be fun. Watching the Lizzie Bennet Diaries and having watched the 2005 version made me realize maybe I should read the book. I read it on my iPad because it was free in iBooks. My sister Charlotte and I were both reading Pride and Prejudice in Belize and we decided to talk about it for a little bit. So here are some of our Belizean thoughts about Pride and Prejudice. I feel like it was good because the, end, the ending kind of tied everything together in a way that it didn't in the movie. Yeah. Because it told where everyone was like standing at the end. I have a hiccup. I just really like the way that um, in Pride and Prejudice, Lizzie, and um, Darcy like make each other better. Like at, after that meeting, like they go along their ways and they're like, ugh. And then they meet each other and they're like, oh, I'm sucky. And then they both try to be better because of the other person told them. And then they do be better. They do be better. <laughs> and then when I came back, I bought a commemorative edition because it's pretty um, for, of Pride and Prejudice just to have an actual physical copy. And then because I'm super nerd, I got the annotated Pride and Prejudice. This one on each page will have the text and then footnotes about society that help you kind of get a deeper understanding of what these things might mean. I mean, here it shows you what the dinner, how the dinner is set up. I mean, crazy. I still haven't read that. I'm gonna read it soon, maybe over this summer. So I might go watch it, I might not, but you should if you haven't. Maybe you should try to fall in love with Pride and Prejudice as much as I have. It's probably hard, I'm really obsessed. I will see you tomorrow.